I'm sitting here with just this horrible realization. I've been divorced for three years, and in that three years, I have spent most of my days figuring out how I can become physically, mentally, financially, spiritually healthy enough to be able to afford and take care of a child. Yeah, that's got to be an unpleasant feeling, right? You know, everything was working out and pretty good in your marriage, and then you decided to divorce, and now you got split custody and whatnot. Like, honestly, I kind of wonder, you know, with all the alimony that you most likely got and uh, child support, how exactly you were having a tough time raising a child, unless the man didn't really have much of a career to begin with. But, hey, that's on you. Anyways, gentlemen, welcome back. I hope you're having a good time. You're having a good day. I appreciate you being here. We're going to get back to the video and see what else is up with this situation. Let's get into it. And not only have I taken that time, but I've done the math. And it, it does not work out. I am not young enough, or fertile enough, or financially stable enough. To even do another round of IVF and <laughs> At 36, like, I'm sorry, like, you're gonna say, like, you have time, like, I don't. Because I can't spend another minute of my life <laughs> trying to make something work. When I'm just fighting upstream. I don't have a support system. I don't have the money. I don't have the resources or the community. And it just kills me. It kills me that I had embryos with my ex-husband that were viable. And they're just gone now. And my future... My future with those children... In my life as a mother. <laughs> okay, like this is this is hard to watch. I'll be honest with you. Believe it or not, I do have a shred of sympathy for people who try to conceive children but aren't successful doing so. Uh, it's very hard to plan and whatnot. And uh, my heart goes out to anybody who's watching who perhaps had a difficult time and that caused a relationship to end or whatever be the case. Um, I'm not quite sure why they decided to destroy the embryos, assuming they did that when the relationship ended. Um, but also, given that this woman is infertile, I, she's a little living in fantasy land here that it may happen. Um, perhaps the likelihood is not that great of it actually happening, you know, actually becoming a child. So, you know, you're getting very emotional over... Um, a possibility uh, well I hope it's possible for you you know things definitely do get difficult at 35 for people to have well for women to have children um, so I think it's a really toxic mentality that women push on each other that you know oh just do it when you're ready and no things might not work out that way you have to really think about it as you know as a young woman but uh, we're about men here so let's continue there's gotta be something it's just, it's gone. And it's not just that it's gone, it's the fact that it was decided for me by so many other people and factors. 
And that's what kills me. Because it was not my choice. And I'm angry. And I'm heartbroken. But what do you do? Okay. It wasn't my choice. I don't know what this woman's talking about, in all honesty, you know? From the age of 18 to be safe to 36, you know? It's quite a lot of years to decide for yourself that you want to have a child and do it when you're more fertile. Uh, I get it's a crappy luck of the draw if she's been infertile since she was born, but um, I don't know. In either case, that's a delicate one. Um, but yeah, I mean, when you got married, you could have said to your husband, like, I'd like to have a child sooner rather than later instead of having embryos. Uh, it's the, the difficult discussions that have to happen in a relationship. The earlier, the better. Let's continue. For men, what do you bring to the table? I get these questions a lot and I don't usually answer it, but let's talk about it today. I feel like there's this narrative like, oh, he does all these things for me and all I have to do is exist, which is kind of true, but it doesn't mean that you're not doing anything for him. And I need the girlies who want princess treatment, who- Oh, you're 100% correct there. You know, men do so much in relationships, usually end up forking out most of the money to take them on awesome dates, awesome trips, etc, etc. Oh, sometimes it's just not there for, you know, a home-cooked meal here and there. Um, I'm glad she's at least on a level understanding that. Want to date quality men to know that there absolutely is reciprocity. It just might not look the same on both sides, and it doesn't need to. Men with provider mindsets want, want, want to provide for the women they love. They genuinely want to take care of their loved ones, whether it's helping financially, physically, or emotionally. She provides a purpose for him, and he's the only one in her life who can fulfill that purpose, and it makes him feel good, it makes him feel needed, and it makes her happy. He's solving all these problems and doing all these things for you because he loves you. And a man who loves you will not want to see you struggling, haggard, or... Right, but men also have been programmed this way since they were butt children with all the media around us and whatnot. So it's our default mode to provide. Um, and, you know, as much as it's not the case now, uh, we kind of want that back. <sighs> Exhausted, period. They will want to do things to make your life easier. He values women who can appreciate and enjoy the things that he does for her. Now, what does she do for him? This is where reciprocity comes in. What can you do to show your love and appreciation for a man who gives so much to you? I don't know. You're the one who knows him. You're the one who knows what he needs. It's no one else's business. And this is exactly why a lot of spoiled girly girlfriends and wifeys don't talk about this because it's not for anyone else to judge. A lot of the times, it is taking care of the home, it is cooking for him, it is making sure that he's well rested and set up for success, but these women do these things because they want to, it's not required. These same women could also be running her own business, she could be working, she could be filling her days up with millions of hobbies, she is looking for ways to improve the life for the both of them, she is always encouraging him and motivating him. At the end of the day, he values and wants someone who makes his hard work worth it. She is someone who can appreciate and enjoy- Oh, ring that back. Ring that back. Everything he has to offer. She is his home. She is his peace. She is someone who loves and cares about him when the outside world is cruel. She is someone he can be vulnerable around without being judged. She challenges him to be the best version of himself, and she holds him to his highest standard. She brings in that soft and warm complimentary energy into the relationship that he can't bring in himself. Okay? We'll need to start getting out. Hmm. You know, I didn't disagree with a lot of that there, but yeah, exactly. Men just want to feel like it's worth it. And I think that's why a lot of men are going their own way, because they don't feel like it's worth it. They don't think it's worth it. It really isn't. But, uh, you know, here's hoping you'll find your unicorn if you're, <laughs> you know, if you're out there dating in this uh, climate. And to those that aren't, I don't blame you. Let's move on. It has to be set up. It is truly, like we were saying before, like the most human thing. Yes, I have been saying this. Oh, my lord. 
I can't tell if she's using a freaking filter or something, but her face is... Literally looks like a cartoon character. Coming from a cartoon character. <laughs> I think that we need to be setting our friends up with people that we know. And, you know, I, I continue to ask people I work with and friends, like, do you know anybody that you could set me up with? And they're always like, mm, no, I don't really know anybody single right now. But think about it. If you're married, you have you, you have your spouse, you have everybody that you work with. You have those people that you work with have siblings and friends and acquaintances and people they met traveling. Like if you go down the line of what who people know, someone knows your future partner, right? It It's just a numbers game. And then if people are like, mm, I would never go on a blind date. If you've ever gone on. Yeah, I mean, that's the case with my brother, right? But in any case, um, if they say they don't know anybody, I think that's a load of crap or they don't want to introduce you to somebody in their friend circle that you could potentially mess up. So I really severely doubt that they either don't want to put in the work for you or uh, you're the problem. But either way, <laughs> else on a date with someone from a dating app, you've gone on a blind date. That's exactly what it is. And I think that bringing back the idea of like setting up people with our friends and family and coworkers and acquaintances, it's an amazing, amazing concept because it just helps us meet new people. And if you go back, there's a stitch to this video with a girl single in LA. She's fabulous. I love her dating advice where she has actually for a while been asking, telling her friends and family that if That's they true. introduce her to the person that she marries, she will give them $5,000 on their wedding day, on her wedding day. Oh, right. I've heard of this one. What a crazy story. That's a great idea, you guys. Like incentivize people to help you out, right? And you think maybe that's kind of a weird concept. Yeah. No, it's not. Like not if you always. have the money and you are are already spending all this time traveling and on dating apps and doing all these things, like incentivize people to help you out. So I am putting that out there too. If you help me meet the, if you are the person that introduces me to the person that I marry, $5,000 to you on, on our wedding day, for sure. I will follow. Oh, you're the one looking. Well, like I was saying before, if your family and friends are not introducing you to somebody, then you're probably the problem. You know, I get this all the time. Oh, you know, why not? Uh, I have somebody in my family, you know, I'd love you to meet. I'm like, I'm fine. Thank you. <sighs> Moving on. With another video of like specifically what I'm looking for, because I have some pretty pretty tight parameters of what I'm looking for. And that's probably why you're single. Um, and that's just due to a lot of things with me. But I think this is so great. So let's start setting up our friends and family again. Let's start introducing people, getting out of our little teeny tiny circles and just meeting people. And if you don't meet the person that you're supposed to marry, you're going to end up making a lot of really neat acquaintances, friends, having new experiences. It's just good for human connection all around anyway. Let me know what you think. Would you ever be set up by your friends and family? Yeah, you know what? Comment down below. I'm curious if you would, but uh, to be honest, stuff like that would kind of be like, Okay, well, you have to be careful how you treat things, you know. They'll talk about you if things didn't go right with the dates, and, oh, it's just a messy, messy kind of situation. At least it can be. I know people it's been successful for, and I know people it hasn't been successful for, and they usually don't get <laughs> invited back to friend events or family events. But either way, love to hear from you guys, as always, or gals. There are a few that are watching this, um, surprisingly. Anyways. Uh, if you haven't already, please do like the video, helps get it to new people. Subscribe if you've watched a few of my videos and you'll like them. And uh, hit the notification bell, because you'll get notified every time my videos go out. Uh, should have some new ones coming for you momentarily. Going to return to uh, reporting and reacting, because I have fun with that. And sometimes you need a bit of a break from all this uh, red meat content, if you know what I mean. Can't always just be dunking on women. We need to learn some lessons from it. Uh, sometimes it's hard to get from some of these. I'm sure you understand. Either way, 
uh thanks for watching always do your due diligence be careful when you're out there dating women over 30 a whole bundle of stuff that comes from that as you've seen catch you in the next one bye for now